welcome to this seminar webinar um, on LibSol, a library of iterative solver, which we have written um, in QCAM, or well, well, now it's part of QCAM, uh, to accommodate uh, different solvers for all different kinds of vector types. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to start with a short motivation. Uh, before I then explain quickly as example algorithm, the Davidson algorithm, so that everyone is on the same footing. Uh, and then I'll start with uh, um, explaining how the library works and how one would use uh, the solver library libsolve in um, some codes, uh, like how we use it in ADC man or in CC man too as well. That's pretty similar. So um, the motivation for writing the solve was um, mostly that uh, well, iterative algorithms are um, common to most quantum methods like dice. Uh, well, and uh, you have different um, types of algorithms in um, quantum methods like dice um, for the SCF or cluster amplitude equations. Um, also for general matrix. Uh, sorry, sorry, Michael. Could, could you please uh, speak a little bit closer to the microphone? We cannot hear you very well. All right. Yeah. Is yeah. Now better? it's much better. Okay. Sorry. Um, all right. Yeah. So um, you have the dice uh, for um, it uh, for li solving linear systems of equations, and then you have Davidson and Langschuss for diagonalizing matrices, like an excited state methods. And they are all pretty common, um, no matter what vector type you use. And all, the only difference is in the details. So uh, what we want to do is we want to only implement these algorithms once and then reuse them for different vector types and um, different uh, uh, details in the algorithms. And that's why we built this LibSolver library, which is um, a library of common building blocks which can be easily specialized in um, for a particular problem like ADC matrix diagonalization or coupled cluster EOMCC uh, methods for the Davidson. So now let's let me first um, um, give a short overview of the Davidson because I'm going to use this as an example throughout um, uh, this talk. So the Davidson is an eigenvalue solver when you have a large Hermitian matrix um, and the matrix is usually too big to store or um, yeah or it's too big at least too big to fully diagonalize and you're then usually only interested in a small number of eigenvalues and eigenvectors um, and um, yeah and the basic idea is for the Davidson you project this big matrix onto a much smaller subspace where you can perform, easily perform a full diagonalization and then you try to adjust the subspace iteratively to um, find um, a subspace which best represents the uh, required or the requested eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And how you do this is you start with an um, initial set of basis vectors for your subspace. So these basis vectors are vectors in the full space, and then you, um, but you only have a few of them. Um, and then you um, start, sorry, you start with a loop. I don't know why this isn't working. Anyway, um, so you start there, this red um, square should go down now. But anyways, um, so you start with a guess, and while you are not converged, you start up, uh, creating um, a projected matrix in these basis vectors. You diagonalize this um, uh, projected uh, matrix, that's step B, um, and then uh, you get eigenvalue, eigenvectors pairs in the subspace. From those, you construct approximate eigenvectors in the full space um, in step C, and then in step D, um, you um, compute the difference between um, the uh, approximate eigenvectors um, and the um, um, and like the uh, like the, the matrix vector product of these approximate eigenvectors minus the eigenvalue times the vector. So you, you plug them into the secular equation 
and see what is left over. And if this, uh, this so-called residual or error vector is smaller than the convergence criterion, you are done and you can finish. Otherwise, you will use these um, basis, uh, this residual vectors to construct additional basis vectors, which is called preconditioning step, which I will explain later. Um, and um, then uh, optionally in step G, if the, um, when you increase the subspace and the subspace size is too large, then you can collapse the subspace um, as well. And um, if, yeah, and then you start off at, uh, with a loop again, um, if it's uh, uh, constructing the new subspace matrix, diagonalizing them and so on. And only when you're converged or the number of iterations you have specified before is exceeded, then you can finish the algorithm and collect your results. So, and then there are some details. So the guess formation, there you have different possibilities. Um, usually one takes the, uh, the largest or the smallest entries of the matrix diagonal and take the, um, um, take the base, the standard basis vectors which, only, uh, which have only an entry in, um, at the element i as, uh, guess vec as first guess vectors. Um, but there are also other possibilities. For example, if you have done a, um, a diagonalization before on a smaller system, then you could use this as initial guess vectors as well. Uh, for the preconditioning, this, the preconditioning step is the most important step in the Davidson algorithm because that um, determines the convergence behavior and how quickly the algorithm converges. So there are several approaches available. The original one, which was proposed by Davidson in, the, uh, in this first paper, is by using uh, um, the diagonal of the matrix you want to diagonalize um, minus the current approximate eigenvalue and um, take the inverse of this and multiply this, this inverse by the residual vector. Um, this uh, preconditioning scheme works best when the matrix is diagonally dominant, uh, but is, uh, can quite often lead to a large number of iteration steps. There are better options for this, uh, which would be um, like, for example, the combined Jacobi-Davidson algorithm where you create, a, uh, where you have a, a linear system of equations um, as uh, for this precondition which you can solve iteratively again. So you would have an, another iterative process in this precondition. Um, uh, well, then there's also this collapse subspace where you usually, like when your subspace gets too large, what you would usually do, you would use your current approximate eigenvectors um, to get, uh, to build a new subspace which is smaller than the previous one. So if you want for example, if you have, uh, if you're requesting two eigenvectors, um, and you build, you increase your subspace in every step, and you have ten eigenvectors, then you would start um, reducing the subspace by just taking the two eigenvectors, uh, the the two lowest eigenvectors in your current iteration, um, and then start increasing the subspace again. So the, this is so much for the Davidson, and this is all I wanted to say about it. Um, this is. Um, just to have everyone on the same basic footing since I'm using this as an example for the library. So the library um, is, as I said, is a um, library of solvers and um, it's all the solvers which are currently implemented derive from the same types and there's some basic, uh, basic components in there. So um, the idea is um, that every iterative solver is pretty similar in the respect that you have first an initialization step and then you have a loop where you do one um, operation every time and during the loop you're checking, okay, are, am I converged? And if you're converged, then you go to the end and uh, do a finalized step and you're done. And this is why we have um, um, implemented a really basic iterative solver class which um, implements essentially the run routine which calls an initialize uh, function that's um, the iterative solver is the one on the left 
hand um, down. Um, um, yeah, well, the run routine is uh, you call an initialize function, um, and and then you uh, go into the while loop, and um, there you ch first check if you're done because maybe you're starting off with an optimal guess already, and then you be you don't want to do um, uh, one iteration from the start, but you would like to do um, directly finish off with and go to the finalized state. So that's why we're checking it first. And then um, in the loop, you call this function next step. And um, as soon as you converge, you call a function finalize. So this is the main purpose of this iterative solver. And um, this is derived from a solver core, which is specific to the respective algorithm um, and specified as a template parameter um, to iterate the solver. And um, this solver core has to implement for each algorithm these uh, four functions, uh, initialize, next step, finalize, and this finish. Um, in addition to these two classes, base classes, you have um, two helper classes, which is the solver state. They Michael. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, maybe you can explain what is handler, what is it for, and what is state, solver state and solver handler. Yeah, that's that's what I was coming to. These are the two helper classes. So solver state is the um, the current. Um, this help, um, holds the current state of the solver, and it consists of a um, some basic information about the solver. So for the Davidson, this would be the number of eigenvalues you want to calculate and um, the maximum number of iterations. Um, and then you have the iteration, uh, then you have some data per iteration and that would hold all the, um, um, all the current um, basis vectors for the Davidson. Uh, it would hold um, the residuals in the current iteration and it would hold the subspace matrix in the current iteration. And um, you have a vector of these iteration containers um, so that you can, um, if you want to implement it uh, in this way, you could uh, keep for every um, iteration the state of your solver. But usually what we do is we delete all the elements in this iteration container, all the big elements in this iteration container after your iteration is finished. Um, the solver handler is then um, essentially just a feedback uh, class which, um, uh, uh, which allows you to print um, information about the current state of the solver during the iteration. So um, since you don't know uh, what the iterative sol um, well, what kind of solver you have, you need some kind of mechanism to give a feedback to the user um, um, about the state of the solver and it has to be general enough to accommodate all kinds of solvers. And this is a base class which iterative solver uses to um, um, to uh, call um, like the, it, uh, the iterative solver calls these functions on initialize, on step, on finalize um, so that any implementation of the solver can um, print out the information, uh, how many states are converged for Davidson, uh, how many states are requested, and so on. Um, and this is probably, um, yeah, so this, the solver handle is really just um, for feedback. Okay, so much for the basics. Um, and then if you want to implement um, the solvers, um, well, as I said, we want the general um, implementation for solvers which is independent of the specific vector type. So what we do is we introduce um, a vector policy in each of the algorithm, which is done now at the level of the Davidson implementation, uh, which specifies, um, uh, which uh, has a few type depths in there uh, to what the scalar type is, what the vector type is. Also, um, it contains uh, functions to create vectors and to destroy vectors because we, uh, the algorithm doesn't want to know how to do this. It just wants to say, okay, I need five vectors and then 
um, give me these five factors and I don't care about how you do this. Um, in addition, since you don't know, the algorithm should know um, how these um, vectors interact with each other, you also need a, a vector, vector algebra um, functions which can add vectors together, um, calculate norms, orthogonalize vectors and also normalize vectors. Um, and this is done by this, abs by this vector algebra. These both, both vector policy and vector algebra are um, traits, um, so it's of the solver um, and they are um, implemented as template parameters in the specific solver. Um, also what you, since you don't, again, since you don't need the vector type and you don't need what kind of matrix you have, you also need an, um, a way to calculate for the Davidson the matrix vector product because this is the essential step in the Davidson algorithm which is most expensive, calculating um, the matrix in the subspace and this is done by taking matrix times vector and then you calculate the results, uh, uh, you create the scalar product of the um, result times another uh, vector to create your subspace matrix. And uh, taking this matrix vector product, therefore we have this update policy. Um, the reason why it's called update policy comes from the first algorithm we implemented this way, which was the um, Jacobi um, algorithm or the DICE algorithm, which is an iterative solver. And where you, you do rather an update than, um, yeah. Okay, and this is, um, this is the um, this is this uh, update policy. It's also a template parameter in the Davidson algorithm. Um, then there are a few more of these policies. There's the precondition policy where you uh, where you say, okay, I have this residual and the eigenvalue, and now give me uh, write the precondition vector into the residual vector. So precondition the residual vector, and there you can re um, and if you have a specific version of the Davidson, you can replace this preconditioning policy um, whenever you um, oh, with whatever preconditioning you want to use. You can use the standard one. You can use the Jacobi Davidson one. Whatever you like. Um, the convergence policy, um, which is same thing. Here you check, uh, this is where you implement uh, how to check the convergence. So for Davidson you would usually implement it like going over all the re residual norms and checking if the residual norm is uh, small enough um, and if yes then you return true and if no you return false. And you could also check the number of iterations, if the number of iterations exceeded or do some other crazy things where there's, this leaves you a lot of flexibility here um, how to implement Davis um, specifically. Um, and these are all only small pieces you can replace um, in the Davidson itself. So and then you have a post-step policy to do some um, uh, some additional things and I think I forgot to change, yeah, that's not the update vectors, it's um, post-step. The, the name of the function is called post step and you can do um, additional things after an iteration step. For example, if you have a special version of the Davidson which, um, which does something additional at the end, um, there, there's an option. Um, for the Davidson I have not a use case, but for example for the dice there's this um, um, uh, spe special version uh, for the die, um, when you do CC2 where they use dice and there you have to update your um, um, your uh, target state accordingly um, to the current iteration state. But that's um, this is this. Um, so now that's that's was the more general um, way. So what are the components which you uh, which you can change in the Davidson to make it specific to your current problem at hand. Now, the Davidson algorithm um, has um, these, or also have this solver state, and this is now the um, um, the solver state which the Davidson um, has. Um, so the base container 
consists of uh, the number of eigenvectors, that's n roots, the maximum subspace size, and a numerical threshold by which we um, discard certain values to avoid numerical problems. Um, these, are uh, these values are usually passed to the Davidson uh, when the, the respective class is constructed and then they are used throughout. Um, the iteration container is, uh, this is the per iteration data of the Davidson algorithm and this is um, the list you see here that uh, is the number of basis vectors, the current number of basis vectors and the current iteration, the basis vectors, the result of the matrix uh, vector product with the basis vector, um, the number of residual vectors, um, the current residual vectors, um, the norm of the residual vectors, subspace size, subspace matrix, and the eigenvalues and eigenvectors in the subspace. And this is um, used by the Davidson algorithm to um, perform these iterations. And, but these are also, also data by which you can get the results or the current state of the algorithm during your iteration using your handler or using the finalize function. Um, so then we have this, um, and then as I said, every solver has the score um, and for Davidson solver, this is also here, like you have this initialize which um, does, um, uses the given gas you've passed to the constructor and builds the first subspace matrix. Then it performs um, the first diagonalization of, uh, the, um, of your subspace matrix and computes also the um, residuals and the norms. And um, we do this, this is essentially already the first iteration, but we do this iteration before because we know that the iterative solver checks for convergence first. So we need to have the first set of residual vectors to check for convergence. Um, then we have this is finished version. This is, as I said, done by the convergence policy because this is something you want to replace in the Davidson occasionally because you want to check for different kinds of convergence. Um, uh, you, um, and this for us usually checks um, for the convergence of the residuals, so if they are smaller than the um, a given threshold, and it checks for the number if the number of subspace uh, of iterations is exceeded. Um, the next step function this would reduce the subspace size if required first, compute new basis vectors using the residuals, uh, diagnose the subspace, and compute. Uh, the, result, the uh, residuals in the new subspace. Um, and this is how you continue and then um, if you are done, it um, the finalized routine computes the converged eigenvectors in the full space and does clean up, so deletes all unnecessary data. And um, the initialize, next step and finalize functions are um, it all implemented in Davidson solver core, that's part of the solver core, while the convergence policy implements this is finished because, as I said, we want to replace this. Um, and, yeah, so, and currently available are, um, as solvers in libsolve are uh, matrix inversion methods, so that would be the Jacobi algorithm, uh, the DICE algorithm and uh, we are currently working on a complex um, subspace solver um, which does matrix inversion for complex numbers um, in um, it's where it's using a subspace scheme like Davidson does. Um, then we have also the matrix diagonalization methods um, where uh, we have the um, Davidson algorithms for symmetric, non-symmetric, bi-orthogonal, non-Hermitian, and other things. Um, and we have also a um, um, draft version of the Langschuss algorithm, which I should put into, into the main trunk of, of eventually. So that would be a different type of um, diagonalization method. Um, so, and how to use these, and now that's probably the most in interesting um, 
piece how to use these existing solvers. Um, so if you want to use one of these solvers, for example Davidson, what you uh, would have to do is um, you would have to implement first a vector policy and vector algebra for your current vector type. So we have done this for our ADC and um, Yevgeny has done this for the couple cluster codes. Um, then you implement for your current problem the update policy which implements the matrix vector product. You implement the convergence policy which uh, would be, uh, for us it's usually the standard but there might be differences. Then you can implement preconditioning policies and there you probably would like to do different type of preconditioning depending on your system um, and so on. And then you connect the policies and the solver implementation by creating a really basic derived solver class. And I'm going to show you how to do this in, um, by walking you through the code right now. And the example is the Davidson. So uh, for ADC2 and ADC3, um, in ADC2 and ADC3 you have a singles, doubles, CI type matrix which you want to diagonalize and our class um, for um, our vector class is called SD amplitude and consists of the single excitations and double excitations and then you implement, uh, we have implement the SD amplitude policy together with this and this consists of these um, of some type depths um, on the top and then you have um, the um, create vector, destroy vector, move vector, create scalar array, destroy scalar array and so on which do really just basic um, operations on the vectors um, to get some vectors the algorithm can work with. Um, and then you also need the vector algebra which um, is the one so the vector algebra class is the one which is, um, is created below in the, in the box and this is just a lot of type depths for the different um, addition, copy, norm, orthogonalization, overlap and scale um, functions and the algorithm expects for, uh, that these type depths are classes, the Davidson algorithm expects that these type depths are classes and the classes have a specific functions and then I've put uh, them all um, above this um, algebra class and then you have um, add vectors in the cl class SD amplitude add uh, which takes um, as arguments um, the number of vectors you want to add, um, the array of vectors, the scalar array for um, because you have usually want to have some scalar multiplication before you add vectors together and then you have the result uh, vector at the end. And um, similar uh, and the other classes are all similar and uh, it's usually documented in the Davidson and DICE classes what um, the uh, uh, what the vector algebra is expected to have. Or, um, well, we have implemented also for a standard vector type, we've implemented this class in LibSolve, so if you, if you want to know what you have to implement, you have, can check there what's uh, required for, you, um, for this vector algebra class. Similar, by the way, for the vector policy class. All right, and then you implement, um, you have to implement all these policy I've talked about before for the Davidson solver. That's um, for AC. It's an SD Davidson solver of H. Um, and here I've only given the headers because the specific implementation is it's not really um, difficult to do, and it strongly depends on the vector type you have to have. There. So the convergence policy has um, as members the maximum number of iteration and the convergence criterion and then you implement the Google is finished uh, function and that would contain essentially a loop over um, all the residual vectors in the current iteration um, and check each one um, for each one the norm if it's small enough, uh, smaller than the convergence criterion then it says yes it's converged 
and if not, then would uh, return it false. And also it would check against the uh, maximum number of iterations here. Um, similar as the preconditioning policy, this one takes, this is just the standard um, preconditioning policy that's, um, which was in the original Davidson paper. Uh, it takes the diagonal of your ADC mate of our ADC matrix, which is called E1 and E2 here, and apply preconditioning, would just uh, subtract uh, the the eigenvalue C from the diagonal and um, do a element-wise division of the residual um, by this um, the result of this dif um, this difference. Um, update policy um, calculates the matrix vector product. Um, we have a, a matrix class there, which has a function um, to implement this matrix vector product, which is called ADC SE matrix. Um, and this is um, yeah, that's it. And you implement also you can implement the post step policy, or you have to implement the post step policy. But in our case, the post step function is just empty. There's nothing done because in the Davidson, in, at least in our version, there is nothing specific here. All right, and now you can um, combine all the policies into the Davidson solver class, um, which is done like this. You have a structure, SD Davidson solver traits, which is derived from the Davidson solver traits, and this takes as template parameters the, S, the vector type, the update policy, um, the preconditioning policy class, um, the conversion policy class, the post step policy class, and the amplitude policy class. And then you have to def also define um, a vector algebra uh, type, which is the SD amplitude algebra in this case. And um, from this, uh, this you then use um, to create the SD the urge to derive from um, the Davidson solver base this SD Davidson solver class. Um, and the only thing you have to implement then is the constructor of this class. And you're done. So these, this is, um, and when you have implemented the constructor and the destructor, which is probably empty, um, then uh, you can call the run function um, of the SD uh, Davidson solver, and it will um, perform the Davidson uh, the Davidson um, algorithm for you. Um, and to start the Davidson algorithm, what you would then do um, is you would have this. Um, um, well, you would start, um, do some preparations before whatever you need. You, we're constructing the ADC matrix um, class here. Pass this to the SD update policy. Create the preconditioner using the diagonal elements. Create the amplitude policy, which needs to get past um, the spaces, uh, the um, some objects. How to create the singles and doubles vectors? Um, the post step policy is empty, so there's nothing to be done. And we have a Davidson handler, which does the um, the printing of the iteration steps, uh, subprinters during the iteration steps. Um, I'm not going into the details here because it's um, it's really just print um, number of iterations, print number of uh, subspace size, print current convergence, um, and that's it. Um, you have to create some guess vectors. The uh, guess vector formation is done outside Davidson solver itself. So what you do is you pass the Davidson solver, the gases, that's the last two parameters in the first line of uh, SD, uh, which starts with SD Davidson solver, and you call solver.run, and it will perform the, um, the ad Davidson algorithm until convergence is reached or iterations are exceeded. And then you can uh, access the results by requesting um, the state from the solver and requesting the last iteration step, uh, the contain uh, the uh, solver state uh, of the last iteration step, and uh, there um, the um, 
member variables v would contain the current um, uh, the eigenvalues while e would contain um, the no v would contain the eigenvectors while e would contain the eigenvalues and this is more or less how you can use the solver library and this is um, also the end of my presentation and I'm looking forward to your questions. I hope that it was kind of helpful to explain how the Davidson or how Lipsolver can be uh, Lipsolve can be used. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, so uh -huh. Anna, you want to yeah, I have a couple of questions. Michael, it is very helpful indeed, yeah. I have a couple of very general questions, maybe silly ones, but uh, maybe you can explain. First, I see that you use, for example, in SD convergence policy, you have this size T, max iteration, scalar T, M convergence. Now, um, why are you using this? Uh, why? So, max iter is just an integer number, right? Yes. So why, why why do you guys use all the size t, scalar t, it's kind of, what, what, what do you try to achieve with that? Okay, I mean, why uh, do you need type def for a double scalar t? All right, size t, is, um, um, size t is just, um, we've started using this one because it's part of the standard c library and this is the largest, uh, uh, this is the integer which is largest, uh, large enough uh, to accommodate any address in the current machine. This is just the reason why we use usually size t, unless we are 100% certain that um, now, nowadays 64-bit integer isn't, uh, is far too big. And, and Well, in this case, you, we probably could have used an unsigned integer. Um, the scalar t is there because I initially planned to um, implement this in general for doubles and flows. And, but now I just changed it to only doubles only. Um, mm -hmm. This is just historic uh, why I used scalar t here. Mm -hmm. uh, you could easily replace, I mean, you see the type def um, on top. Yeah, I see it right there, yeah. But uh, yeah. as a general, you know, kind of concern uh, about code readability, right? If you just come in and too many type devs can kind of complicate it. Yeah, and related question is all these type devs you had in SD amplitudes also, I think, class. And I wasn't quite sure how you use them and again, what do they do? So, uh, like, uh, yeah, let's say SD amplitude, right? So basically I want to say that for singles and doubles, my amplitude is just um, uh, two block tensors, right? So it's kind of sounds like a simple template class to write, right? So, and... Uh, yes. So, so what are these type devs? Can you kind of explain like to... Um, okay, to also here them? that has historic reasons because the original implementation was uh, like for block tenses with arbitrary template parameter n and there it was nice to have, uh, not have to write v, uh, v tensor um, template n uh, comma double um, as type for every vector type so and also um, this is like um, this is keeping it as similar to the um, basic requirements you um, well for SD amplitude policy here you for for this policy you need the type depths at the beginning because um, the Davidson solver itself expects um, it doesn't know which type you're using. So it needs uh, some type depths, some uh, common type depths which it can use to say, all right, this variable is a vector or is pointed to a vector. And that's why you need in SD amplitude, in particularly you need the type depths. You wouldn't need to use this type depths in the functions like create vector and destroy vector. But uh, since the Davidson algorithm has to cope with all kinds of vector types, it needs some general type here. And it's also was originally designed to accommodate also different uh, plotting point types. Um, so um, you also need a scalar type definition. So, so again, yeah, you just, you know, you guys, you use completely different philosophy. So, like Davidson class, because it doesn't know which vectors it use, like I thought logical uh, approach would be to 
program it as a template class, right? And then you, which operates with abstract vectors and does all that. Uh, but uh, yeah, but then um, you someone might want to use not just this, uh, uh, for example, for vector pointer type. Yeah, so vector is a template parameter there. Yes, mm -hmm. there you're right. So you wouldn't need to type it for vector. Uh, but for example, the vector pointer type, um, someone might want, might want to use the standard auto pointer um, as um, a vector pointer, a standard auto pointer of um, a vector as vector pointer instead of uh, the, the, the normal C pointer which um, helps you by um, um, that you don't need to take uh, uh, track down your pointers in your code because uh, whenever uh, the standard auto pointer um, goes out of scope it would um, uh, the the data would automatically be destroyed this would avoid memory leaks for example um, this is one reason why you might want to have a different type uh, a specific type that for vector pointer same with vector array type. Um, mm -hmm. There you might, um, I mean, we specify how vector array type is used, but um, you might want to use different kinds of setups. So, for example, instead of using standard vector as vector, uh, at, as the array of vectors, you might uh, want to use um, uh, standard C arrays or uh, just pointers which you can access. And um, the Davidson algorithm itself doesn't know about this. And you can't make um, vector, vector array and vector pointer template parameters. That's just too much. Um, you need to reduce this number of uh, template parameters. We already have, in my opinion, yeah. almost too much. So basically when I look at this SD amplitude policy, right, so what you tell here, you tell that Scalar T, what uh, Davidson needs to know what it is, that it's a double, right? And yes. vector T, that's something that Davidson needs to know, right? Yes. Uh, what it is. It's SD amplitude, which you define here, this class, right? And then, um, so okay, I think I, I'm starting to get it. Now, my next question is, um, uh, like this complex subspace solver, so do you refer to complex Davidson? or it's something else, because we have complex Davidson already, you probably seen it in the, so it's... Uh, um, oh, you mean this... Um, coming this, soon, yeah, because... This one, yeah. No, it's it's in a matrix, um, well... Well, it's complex DIS. It's it's a bit like complex DIS. It's it's not quite oh. the same, because um, it's, it's designed to solve multiple systems of linear equations at the same time, um, which um, are which like for, uh, they, the problem we had here is you have like um, one matrix um, or no you have like several matrices which are slightly different but only really really slightly essentially they have a constant um, term on the diagonal um, by which they differ and you want to and you have different right hand sides and you want to solve this. Mm -hmm. Uh, these uh, these number of linear equations um, at the same time this mm -hmm. yeah these different systems mm -hmm. of linear equations at the same time by building up a subspace in which you can invert your matrix more efficient uh, mm -hmm. yeah, in which you can you invert your matrices or mm -hmm. solve your um, your systems of okay linear so equations. it's not for complex numbers it's for complex uh, well, it's it's also for complex numbers, but it's it's a slightly different scheme oh. compared to the data. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, like, just one comment, uh, which is about what is coming soon in our group. Uh, we had uh, last week very interesting discussion with people who develop uh, who were developing uh, Davidson-like solvers for interior eigenvalues and uh, Dima started working on it so that your seminar is very timely so you may add to the solvers this new one. It would be Davidson-like solver that solves for eigenvalues which are high at a given, uh, around given energy. That sort of thing. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so I think it's always my questions. I will mute myself and let uh, maybe people from the audience to ask questions and go over questions. 
Yeah. yeah so, are yeah. there any questions? Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Michael. So, do, do you have any questions here? Uh, we have some. Ah, okay. Questions. Okay, so the, um, did you hear the question? Um, okay, so the question was <laughs> if, you frequent, um, if you need. Okay, the question was if the preconditioner is required in ev uh, only at the beginning or in every step. So what you do is you uh, you you need to precondition in every step your residuals to create new basis vectors. And uh, the preconditioner, well, you create the class, like in our setup, you create the class at the beginning with a diagonal, and then um, you call this function apply preconditioning in the step, uh, during the iteration in every step to every residual you have, which is not yet converged. That's essentially how you do this. All right, further questions? So on our side, there are no questions. Okay, and I think we don't also have any questions, so I think we can conclude this presentation. So thank you very much, Michael, for a nice presentation, and thank you, everybody, for attending. So. All right, thank you as well. Thank you.